here that will um, have some good questions and input for you um, as you go on. So this is uh, the project on 4154 uh, Murfreesboro Road. I will, um, uh, Mr. McG I will let you all, um, instead of me even trying to go ahead and introduce yourself, because I'll screw up somebody's name or mess up something. And then if you will go, because I know you have um, met before, but give like a quick overview in case somebody is on here that wasn't before, wasn't before. And um, just to help remind people, because so many things come before us, what is what. Um, I do want to take some time out and say uh, thank you very much uh, to Ms. Roseanne. Um, and Larry was right, you do keep us all straight. Um, uh, you try sometimes with me. <laughs> I don't know if you're successful most of the time, but um, I really appreciate all the work and the time that you put in to making all of this happen because folks behind don't know how much of this you actually make happen. So thank you so very much. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over so we can go ahead and get started. Thank you all very much. This is David McGowan. I'm president of Regent Homes. And about two years ago, we had Miss Oliveri, uh, who lives on the property out here, uh, just to just below the section that's on the screen there. Uh, they approached us. Her husband had purchased the property behind them, uh, which would include about total of about 99 housing units of which were 24. The, the, he had gotten that piece of property and he's gonna try to develop himself. He got halfway through his zoning process and all and he died of a heart attack. And the bank was gonna foreclose on him and somebody told him about Regent that we might be able to buy it. So we purchased that property behind there and that property now just today has been recorded uh, for a section of lots that we're gonna do in there. And so we're going to do single family homes in there and we're going to do a few townhouses, about 24 townhouses. The section out front was actually part of their uh, homestead there. And again, uh, the business that they were in was a pizza business and, and food business and they had to shut that down. So we purchased this track from her uh, this past year. And uh, we were looking at one time trying to do some commercial out there and all, but the commercial market has changed so much we decided to address what we considered a critical housing shortage in Nashville. And so what we proposed here is townhouses that we build in throughout Nashville right now. And these are basically a one car alley loaded townhouse as well as a two car uh, alley loaded townhouse. And so if you look at the plan there, you can see that. One of the things that came up on the property was that we didn't know when we purchased, there's a log cabin on that property that was built back in the 1860s. Uh, we looked at moving it. We had several people study it with us uh, and all. And so we've determined to leave that log cabin. Uh, what we're going to do with that log cabin is we're going to take the aluminum siding and the other features that were added over time and restore it back to the original dog trot is the term uh, the experts told us log cabin, which is basically a, it's two different structures that are tied together with a roof and we're going to restore it back to its original condition. We basically intend to basically put a fence around it and make it part of the amenity for the, the community. Uh, we do not see it something being open for tours and things of that nature, but basically it'd be there uh, and the rooms should be able to be used to be like a big open room in a log cabin that would be able to be used uh, for that. And you can see we've got a little parking there behind it. Uh, and so it will be actually deeded to the homeowners association and controlled by the association. Uh, the type of structures that we propose to build there, if you could show up the uh, elevations of the buildings, uh, are typical what we call uh, townhouses that we build throughout Tennessee. Uh, we built these uh, in Murfreesboro, we built them in Lenox Village, we built them down in Franklin. And uh, you'll see that we use a brick uh, and hardy siding on these. So this is a one car garage product that's there. And so those would have a driveway that you could park in front of, as well as a car in the inside. And then the other product is an alley loaded product. And, and that particular product is a two car garage. And, and again, you access both of these 
off of the street. There's no direct street access for the actual uh, car. The car goes into to a private area that's parking. Oh, uh, town home back up there that he's talking about. Yeah, we we'll get that town home back up. <clears throat> uh, we propose that the trash pickup on this site will be done uh, by a dumpster that we will put on the site. Uh, that has access to the homeowners uh, on that particular one. But if you can see the architectural styles that we've done there, it's very, you know, what I call a southern traditional architecture that you used to see all throughout uh, Middle Tennessee right now. And it has, uh, you know, nice architectural details of uh, brick on the front. Typically, we go down the side with half brick, uh, on the uh, brick on the first floor only. And then we usually put siding above that. And the same thing with the rear. Uh, we usually put brick on the first floor and then siding above that. And so these range anywhere from as low as about 1,650 square feet to just over 2,000 square feet. Uh, price points uh, for the smaller one car, we would like to start in the very low threes, and we see them probably going into the to to the mid to probably up to as high as 370 for the larger one for the two car garage. Those would be the 2,000 square foot units. And so they'll meet all the energy codes in Nashville. And, and again, it, it, this community will tie back into the Oliveri, um, which, which again, we just received the plat today and we'll start foundations on those. Okay, I need to ask something to make it very clear when you were talking about the siding, I wanna know, exactly what kind of siding and you showed us the houses and you know that our uh, community is very, very um, interested in maintaining the uh, grassland and the green space and all that kind of stuff. If you can talk a little more about that, how you plan to do that, your um, ins and outs, um, because I think you only have one in and out, but all those type of things get a little more specific. Yeah, so the siding is cement siding, and, and the, the brand that we use is Hardy Board. And so the Hardy Board, if you look down at the architectural standards on the bottom, building facades fronting the street shall provide a minimum of, of a principal interest of a door and a minimum of 15% glazing. That means how much window area that we show on the, the front of the house. And so the, the elevations you see meet that guidelines right there. And, uh, and same way with the windows on the side, we will have windows on the side and then as far as the exterior, you can see the building facade shall be constructed of brick, brick veneer, stone, cast stone, cement, siding, glass, and materials substantially similar to the form and function as shown on the pictures. Uh, and so um, if we put a front porch on the front of the building, which you don't necessarily plan to do on these, it would be a minimum of six foot deep. Uh, we will have some patios and decks on the rear of these and those things are typically somewhere between a five and a six foot depth that you can actually use. Okay, I don't know if you have somebody monitoring uh, the chat, uh, but there's some questions in there and I will tell you, uh, Ms. Gilda, um, and I hope I'm not saying your name incorrectly because it's gone up now. Um, I usually ask about that because that is a big need in our community, making sure that we have um, homes for uh, those that are getting up in the um, age like I am, um, I have had very few that are targeting just that age. I did have one builder who wanted to actually have a whole development that was for like uh, 55 and older, um, but he hadn't come through with it. He was just talking about it. So I haven't seen anything on that. That right now is just talk. But if, um, you'll go ahead and have somebody to look at some of the specific questions and be reading those off as you're waiting for questions um, as well as uh, You know, basically, as far as amenities, you know, it's all passive. You know, we'll have a, a park area back in the uh, other portion of Olive Area that we've already constructed. So, and, and that park area is surrounded by townhouses and 30% of those townhouses will be mastered down uh so that would you know be, definitely apply to a senior 60, 55 plus and older uh th these that we're building out front here they will all have a minimum of two bedrooms uh there will be some that will have a what we call a flex room 
that flex room would be on the first floor where the garage is located. It could be used uh, for a uh, family member who wanted a bedroom on that floor, or it could be used as a um, more or less office area or something for uh, like a bonus room uh, for kids and stuff. And so uh, there are three stories. So the room behind the garage is what we call a flex room. We go ahead and put a full bath down there because what we're finding is a lot of people that are buying their homes, uh, their parents might be coming back to live with them or, or one of their older children might be coming. They want their own separate bedroom on the first floor. Uh, and so that's why we're doing the three stories. Over again, David, the price points in the square. Yeah, the, the basically, you know, in some parts of town, the ones that are on the back of the one car, we have started as low as the 290s. Uh, the, the real question would be, what is the cost of materials by the time we start these particular units? We see them starting in the low 300s at today's material cost. If the housing and demand slows down and material prices and supply chain cleans up, we hopefully bring these in in the high 200s, the ones on the back road that are one car. Uh, the ones with the two car, we see those in the mid 300s. And so to be somewhere around the 350, maybe up to 360s, uh, the larger ones, but the smaller ones we see starting hopefully at the very low threes. Um, and if we can, we would probably start them in the high 200s, uh, maybe 290s. 1,650 square feet. Right, and and those are 1,650 square feet where the, the larger two car ones are right at 2,000 square feet. I don't see any other questions at this time. She was on the camera. Yeah. Comment? Comments, suggestions, questions? Right, I got a question. Um, I was trying to type in real fast before y'all moved on. So um, just kind of wondering, are these, um, are all the parking in the rear? Is, is, is that what you said? The, they actually all have garages. And so there's a one car garage on the ones that are, that are the 1,650 square foot units. And then there's two car garages on the other. There's 17 units that have one car garage, but each will have a parking pad in front of it, which meets the which meets the uh, city standard. Uh, okay. So, so uh, and then we also have some. Uh, we also have two parking spaces behind all the larger units as well. Two inside and two outside, and then we do have some overflow parking in there for guest parking. Any chance you will offer those who want um, covering over their the the driveways in the back? Any chance that that you will offer that to them? You know, say if somebody pulls in uh, in the back. I know you said that you had uh, some with two car garages where they'll be able to park in. But for those cars that are left outside, um, will the homeowner be able to? You know, get a. I can't recall. What, what do you call those? Co Covers. I mean, people park under them. Over. Um, we, with doing with the setbacks with the city requirements and stuff, I do not see that being that. This will be uh, under the control of the homeowners association. At this time, we do not see the drives being able to be covered. Now, again, the garages will be uh, fully be able to use as a full car garage and have a car parking spot outside as well. Okay, so the next question is, where is that? I can't tell what this property is located. Is this close to the um, life care of Hickory Woods? Is is that where this is? It's not like to get into that. Probably. We were going to try to pull up a vicinity map, but there's no brick wall out front. And this is a little white house. If you know where they were going to one time build a retirement home. This is located back west of that about you know one one or two lots back from that area yeah i i can't say i'm not from that familiar with that area um but is that close to the um exxon station at laverne couchfield or, or do we it's, know or? it's approximately i'd say a quarter of a mile from that location okay back so okay so there's a little um 
what you call this place, a gardening place, a business um, over here across from the trucking company. Is it in that vicinity? Because that's right close to the Exxon, sta or well, what used to be the Exxon station. Yeah, that's the corner you know where there's, a bunch, Hill. there's a bunch of uh, uh, pipe and manhole stored next to the Exxon station. And then there's one lot where there's a house and then there's another vacant lot. And then there, that's the interest of this neighborhood. So we'll have direct interest to uh, Murphy's Pro Road. And the road we're in on the backside, it goes into. And excuse me, excuse me for interrupting, but while you're talking about that, while you're describing that, can you put the picture back up? Uh, our WebEx is frozen. <clears throat> that's the Maxwell Road. Oh, and the yeah, our WebEx is frozen right now. We're still able to talk, but I can't open up any windows right now. I'm trying to, but I'll see if I can get it fixed. So we'll have this neighborhood will okay. come back into Maxwell Road on the rear, and it also ties to the neighborhood that is directly adjacent to it. So we've got okay. Um, so so will you be opening any new streets or or I mean to somebody else's um, neighborhood or? We will at one one street does open to an existing neighborhood. But can you uh, tell me which one that is? The one that we're developing behind here. Okay. Do you know the name of that subdivision? Uh, the name oh, of the street, the name of the street is called Kickery Way. So uh, uh, if you went into Oliveri, that's directly behind here that we're developing now that we got the streets paved. Uh, there's a road called Hickory Way that ties back in. There and then we also tie in the very rear to Maxwell Road. Okay, I see. I was trying to see if there's a road to my neighborhood. Just want to make sure. Thank you. Let's see what else comes up. Can they see that? No, see, I can click on that. It's, it's frozen up. Okay. Yeah, I can see that now. Can you see it? Yeah, I think when we opened up the chat, it kind of froze our uh, system up there for some reason. We don't know exactly what happened, but that heirloom drive right there that will uh, open up out on the Murfreesboro Pike, and it will extend back into the subdivision that they're presently developing. That's called Oliveri, and Oliveri ties into the Hickory Way. That David just referenced, and then that will be a street to go all the way from Murfreesboro Pike back to Maxwell Road. That's where it'll eventually die in the back. Okay, so I'm where will people actually enter their homes? Everything, all the garages are on the back. From what well, I can see, the that's where people are going to walk. They're not going to go, no, you so know, that, like heirloom drive. So these photos are not very, you know, the, the renderings are not very indicative of what this community oh, yeah. oh, will be. Sure. So if the ones that are backing off the alley, that they can enter through that door right there or go through the garage and enter into the house. Those are the smaller 1600 square foot units. Where, go back to the previous photo and explain the alley. I don't see an alley. So, so the area that's an show, alley. Show it on with the cursor there. Just run your cursor up. Oh, I think I can see my cursor. Yeah. Can, can y'all see his cursor when he puts it on the drawing? Try it. Try it and see. Right there. Can so you that, see it? That's alley. 24 foot wide. It's actually, it's actually a drive. It'll be a rear, the, the two car garage units that are facing the, directly onto the road. Those will be a rear entry. The one car garages are a front entry with a front door that comes in there. Just like the drawing show, go back to the. So explain that, right to there, me the on the two car entry. garages, explain to me how somebody enters their home. They open the garage door. And they can park directly behind it, open the garage door and go in. And again, if you want to see this type of product, we build it all over the Nashville area. You know, the but, neighborhood we call but, Berkeley Commons. Open up the other. And okay. And if I'm a guest, how do I go to how do I go to uh, a friend's home? Okay. So they can go out the front door. That's one of those fancy two car garages. 
that's the two car garage units. That's the front of them that opens up on the heirloom drive. There's the front doors on those. So do they have a sidewalk that goes around from from the back? The drone. There is a sidewalk all along the front, and there's a sidewalk that comes bring the what we we call the private drive right. back over to the sidewalk. So you look on the point your arrow down there. Right. Right there is a sidewalk right there that can walk around and come back around the front. But but there's not going to be any parking on Heirloom Drive, correct? Metro is making us make heirloom drive wide enough for it to have parking along that. That's one of the requirements that they're going to impose on this is that that drive, that road will be wide enough to park along. And how wide is that? I can't blow it up. And... Third of the height. 55 feet. It's 55 foot right away, 30 foot of pavement. 30 foot of pavement. Yes. Okay. All right. So and somebody sidewalk. parks on each side and uh, side. emergency <laughs> vehicles that have a field day trying to get through. Well, we call it traffic calming in our business. It helps slow us down the traffic so people won't be running through with a racetrack. But we also plan on putting street trees on that. And again, we, we, we've been building this type product in Nashville now for uh over 25 30 years and if i can take you out to lennox village and show you the same well, i I, I live in one of your former ones i i know you know what you do to your yeah, homeowners so, right um so you know what are you doing in terms of traffic calming by design well part of that does allow uh, the actual you know parking on the street uh if a customer wants to park that way as far as the the city road standards we have to meet the city road standards uh if you are know you the, doing uh, any we do have a turning in, lane out front okay. uh, in, so. in terms of in terms of all of your construction what are you doing that is above metro minimum standards uh, well i think the bottom line if you look at the standards we build by you know, the, uh, whether it's a uh, hardy board, whether it's brick exterior, whether it's architectural elements of it, whether it's uh, energy code, we, we surpassed on our energy code efforts. Uh, and, you know, if you look at the energy code that we build on it right now, uh, and so all the things being considered, we consider ourselves, you know, way above the average home builder when we, the product that we build in the national market. And at the same time, think you, know, you start looking at, we do build energy efficient windows in all of our homes. Uh, we put street trees on all of our streets, uh, and then the width of the sidewalks, the access points, and things of that nature. Uh, we we believe we do not build a substandard product by any means. We build a lot in the Nolanville area. We build a lot in the Franklin area. These houses are equal to the, what we build right now in Berry Farms down in Franklin. As a matter of fact, they're very very similar <laughs> designs. So one of the things I think he was referring to, because this is what I usually tell people when we talk about something and they say they build to the Nashville code that you're right. Nashville does says just what needs to be said to 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 pat to get whatever it is passed. So I think the question is not looking at your standards, because, of course, you're going to use standards uh, that fit the bill for what is needed. You're going to have to. Um, but what I guess the right thing would have been to say, what extras are you doing for the community? So when people look at this community, they can say, oh, they really care about the area. They put something extra in there. For instance, when you were talking about the um, traffic calming, I usually talk to um, and ask about if not, because I do know that emergency vehicles don't like bumps. So I usually talk about um, things like the little flat things uh, that I forgot what they call that put in a road to help calm the traffic or either those like lines that go across that make a sound or even um, circles. So those are some things that Metro probably wouldn't say you need to, but if you look at the trouble that we've ha been having in this area with 
folks speeding through, even when there's not a lot of space. I think they look at too much, too many Fast and Furious movies. I don't know what it is, but we have that problem out here. So those are like some extra things that Metro wouldn't say, but shows that you understand the problems that we have out here and you're trying to do some extra things for the area. And the same about the greenery that I was asking you about, since you know that our folks really care about that. I know that there's a certain amount, according to Metro, that they want to see there, but then there's some things that you may do over and beyond to show that you care about it. And I do want to commend you on that house, because I can remember we had a conversation about that house. Um, that house is actually a historical site for some, any of you that weren't here when he was talking about the house. So instead of of removing it, they're looking at a way of trying to preserve it and have it go back to the HOA um, and and do something nice with that historical piece. And I don't, I think they may be doing a, a historical plaque for that too. But those are the type of things that are over and beyond. So when you when you talk about stuff, other stuff that you're looking at and you get um, comments or um, suggestions from some of the folks that are on here that are in the area. Those are the type of things that we're looking at, some things that would be over and beyond that would really help with that area. So we see uh, basically irrigating all the yards. Again, you know, if you went to some other builders in that area, you might find all vinyl siding if you just go down the road to Laverne. Where you see our yeah, but none that so, none that are coming to me now. I will not have vinyl siding. Yeah, and so we can see we're mainly brick exteriors and brick on the first floor, and then we're doing the cement siding on the rest of it. And, and typically, we use a three tab uh, dimensional shingles on our roof. Uh, we do energy efficient windows and doors. And so yeah, there's a long list. I'm not prepared to pull off my my top of my head. But again, if you went to any of our other projects that we've built, you would find those those same elements that we put in the house there will go in these houses here. I've got a question for the developer. Uh, looks like the original plan was 15 housing units in the commercial space. Now you've eliminated the commercial space, but you added 10 housing units, which is fine. They give you 25 housing units. My question concerns how do you decide what type of housing unit to put on this particular piece of property? And I'll ask it this way, not trying to cast any bad thoughts or anything on anybody else, but theoretically, if you put something like this on identical section of land, 1.3 acres or three acres, whatever it is, in Brentwood, you would probably build $500,000 housing units. I'm guessing there. No, no, that's what I'm asking. These are going to be 300,000. What's your decision making process in deciding to put $300,000 houses here rather than $500,000 houses? Well, the first thing is Brentwood, I couldn't get the first base with this plane. <laughs> they, they, want a, they want one acre, one and a half acres for every house. And they they don't allow us to build townhouses out there. But in the Nolensville area, we build the same townhouse. And again, if you went out there and go to a couple of my communities, if you would find over in the Nolensville area, we started at this same identical price point. We started right to low threes. There are up into the higher threes now and goes up into 450, mainly because of demand. Uh, and so when I said the price point we hope to, it all has to do with what we pay for things. And so Again, if you went into the Lakes Village community, you went into Berkeley Commons, Berkeley Springs, you go to any of my website and look at it, you'll see right now there is no supply because the demand is so high. We we release houses on a, on a Tuesday. We can tell you we got four or five offers for every one of them. Now, how do we determine what we're going to build for? We have a company uh, that we use uh, and we pay them good money to tell us what we should build. Now, we actually were going to put a Dollar General store on this one time, but Dollar General, the configuration of the store, they did not like it. And and so we we said the best thing for us to do is forget the Dollar General store. They were willing to pay a little bit higher price. 
uh, than what you would normally get for a piece of property like this. So we abandoned the Dollar General store and went back to uh, simply townhouses. And so we call it TCGs, Targeted Consumer Groups. So we can tell you what the demand is at different price points for different type of housing all throughout uh, the greater Nashville area. Again, we'll, this year we'll do over 500 houses in the greater Nashville area. And uh, again, this very similar product, if you went down Burkett Road and you drove into Burkett Ridge, you would see this same product that's being in there. Now, it might have some different exteriors because we might have more hardy siding, but you would find some that has all brick siding on the front and maybe the, the half like we told you in the back. But it's all done by studies. And so just like the automobile industry builds different size cars for different price points and for different customers, that's what we're doing here. And so we see the young millennial families wanting to buy here. Uh, they're coming to work from everybody from Amazon to Bridgestone uh, to all the other companies that are moving here right now. And so this product here is actually targeted for buyers between the ages of 28 and 45. And we know exactly what they want in the house. We know they want hardwood stairs. We typically put that in as standard. We know that they want islands in the kitchen and they want uh, you know hoods and special ranges and stuff like that, 42 inch upper cabinets. And so we usually put those in those as well. So this whole product is designed by around what we call a TCG, a target consumer group. And so we know how many people will probably buy these and how fast they sell before we even break ground on them. So that's, that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell for you. And we're glad to answer any other questions you got about it. But again, we build this product we build it in Smyrna, we build it in Franklin, we build it in Columbia, we build it in Middle Tennessee. Uh, thank you. That's a very good response. And I've got one more question that kind of tags along on that. How, how do you determine the number of housing units to put on a particular space? For example, this one, is it the same kind of reasoning? Yes, it is. If you again, they go to Burkett Ridge or to Burkett Commons, either one, the city gives us a guidelines for density. Uh, Joe could probably answer it better than I, than I can, but the bottom line, they give us re recommended density that we can do in this particular area. And it ranges anywhere from nine units the acre up to 12 units the acre. And so uh, we meet with the planning staff. Uh, we talk to them about what we're thinking about doing. And they tell us if we meet the uh, what's that called? That plan? Uh, urban. Well, they, they've got what they call Nashville next. And this piece of property also lies under the Murfreesboro Pike urban design overlay area. So by trying to meet all the regulations and everything else, plus being able to have the open space that David usually requires to be in the developments, he, he provides, you know, for amenities and open space and passive open space for his residents. The density on this actually ended up being a little over six units an acre. Uh, so the way it, the design is laid out is to, to make it a community type feel, uh, something that he feels like the, the buyers will want, desire, try to promote, promote a sense of community in the, in the development. And sometimes you kind of kill that if you try to get too many units in there. So uh, we, we feel like this is the right mix, got the right amount of open space on it and everything else, and will work well within the community and, and meets all the designs that the community has in the past met about and actually through several, several meetings and, and getting this Perfect Borough Pike Urban Design Overlay instituted that the community would desire. You see, we could simply put two bed, two two story units out there in surface park. We prefer to always put a garage because we know we sell a lot of young single females now that are nurses and professionals that are working in the workforce today. And they always prefer to be able to pull in that garage, be able to go directly into the house. And so, uh, again, that's part of that targeted consumer group that we study. So Thank explain you. it to me so I can understand that there are three phases to Oliveri, and this one includes uh, 25 units or, or so forth, and yet uh, phase three that's already been approved, it seems a little uh, bass backwards that we're talking about phase one uh, rezoning and phase two and phase three have already been rezoned, uh, but phase three 
is 11.39 acres and you got 32 single family homes going there. So, you know, if the, you know, target consumer group um, was good enough for phase three, why isn't it good enough for phase one? The only thing I'll tell you that the, the single family houses that are in the back, they'll have two car garages. Those houses will start in the 450s and probably go up to as high as 550. And so the then single why family, can't we have it all the way through? So if, you look, if you look at National, so it's Next, National Next, highly recommends uh, three different type of products typically. They like everything from a town home to a single family home minimum in a community. And if you can get them, they like you to put town homes. And so I can tell you a neighborhood right now, and I'm doing called Crothers Crossing, we're mandated that we have to build condos. And those were stacked flats. And so again, it's around designing what the, the market needs right now in the housing. And okay. I have, a question. I have a question. You are mandated that you have to put up townhouses? No, we're mandated we have to build condos in over in uh Crothers. however that was done because of the sp this particular neighborhood in this area here they recommend different price points and different type products we call it a t3 deal and so basically underneath that plan that joe mentioned a while ago there's recommendation of what type of housing they prefer us to do and this falls under that class okay so i was hearing the wrong thing what you were saying about you were mandated to put those it was because the plan had already been put in place. Yeah, that's uh, a different right here. Okay, and side. so, and so here the demand, um, the mandate just depends on what the what the um, zoning allows. Correct. Correct. What okay. the overlay? The overlay. What's it called, Joe? Again? It's the Murfreesboro Park Urban Design Overlay. And so that overlay tells you what the the nashville next plan envisioned for this corridor right what they envision and what they would like for the council to approve exactly but if the community doesn't like it council member lee then uh you know we have a voice I understand you have a voice, Larry. You weren't understanding how I was putting my question to him. I don't know. No, think. no, I, I, I appreciated your question <laughs> very much. So I do understand what Metro intends to go places and I do understand how they approve different things, but that doesn't always mean that that's what uh, gets approved. So I try to always tell my developers uh, when you're talking about something, certain things that it doesn't go if you just say, well, we're gonna do what, what's over there. We're gonna do what um, uh, you what the other, other ones are. We're gonna stay the same, or we're gonna do what Metro, because there's some things that can be done added on top of uh, instead of just the same. And then if that's what goes through and if that's what gets voted in, that, that's what goes through and gets voted in. Other comments and uh, by people that are on here because it's I I don't like after something goes through and then people say well we didn't like this because of this or it needed that so if it's something they're waiting for the input now um, and targeted I think you got that uh, great question Billy how long ago okay moving in who assessed the Exit okay, so we didn't really talk about uh, the school parts of it. I don't think unless you all were doing that when I had another call, because I got another phone call and had to be pulled away. So you might want to uh, talk about that a little bit. What schools do these go into? And if you have talked to um, the school system, I do know whatever um, whatever report that is that Metro usually uh, gives saying how many um, school children that this type of, of development will yield is not always the best thing to use because if we are already overcrowded, even if it yields half a child, <laughs> that's that's too much. So 
kind of talk about if you've looked at that and uh, what pluses. I also ask, and I don't know if I asked you all, I also have started asking now um, to kind of uh, bring the uh, school board member in the area into the conversations when you have that, because they may be able to help you with what type of pluses or what type of uh, additions or what type of um, uh, things you can also help the school with maybe to try to show, because I, I will give you the bottom line. My folks, the first thing that they ask is, okay, so what are you doing to improve the community? What are you doing for the community? And I know your answer is, well, we're building nice looking houses and condos here, but that that in itself isn't the answer. So they're looking for other things that you are doing that is that are extra and above that will make people say, oh, well, okay, that might be adding to the traffic a little bit, but you know what else they have done? And that's good. So kind of talking in those terms too as well. And I'll stop now. If anybody else has comments, please. I've been living in uh, Nashville since 1988. I've been on the Adventure of Science board, executive board, and a finance committee for over 25 years. I've been on the Habitat and Humanity Executive Board and helped them find the site that they built over on Longfield Road uh, for over 15 years. I just recently helped Habitat and Humanity find a new place to build a store out in Wilson County. Uh, in addition to that, we're involved in different other community events and things of that nature. Just recently, we donated a site of 5.1 acres of land for Nashville uh, Fire Department to build a new firehouse near Burkett Road and I-24. We also are working with the charter school and the public school both for a 15-acre uh, site over near Crothers to build a new uh, middle school and possibly elementary school. Uh, and so if you go back on Regent Home's web pages, you'll see we are very, very involved in the community and we stay extremely involved and very invested in the com community. I just came off as chairman of a deal called Go Build Tennessee. I've been on that board for five years in which we promote young people to come into our industry to work as home builders. Uh, we're heavily involved in Middle Tennessee State University. We've donated a lot of money for a program called CMT, which is Construction Management Te Technology. I have 16 people who have graduated from MTSU in that program that work for me today as superintendents, making good money in the deal. And so when you start looking at a, this small little area here, uh, it you know you don't have a whole lot of area to do anything for schools one way or the other, but uh, you can go back and you can check with Granberry Schools. You'll see I was a pencil partner with Granberry Schools. They wanted a new sign out front. Our company back then built a sign for them to put out in front of that deal. So uh, if you again, you'll find us that we're pencil partners with the elementary schools throughout the areas that we work in. And we do what we can do. And so uh, we're very, very involved with the community. This is not a company that's owned by somebody in New York or Houston, Texas. Uh, I own this particular company and we stay very, very involved in the, the local community and do what we can do for it. I got one more question on schools. When you go through the planning department to get your approval, do is there a school board or a school person who gives an opinion that the additional students in this development will not reflect negatively on the school uh, capacity? Or do you have any, does anybody get any assurance like that before you build them? The part of the approval process, and I believe the council lady she alluded to this also through, through the approval process, Metro will go through and they will uh, use their numbers and their calculations to project the impact uh, of the number of elementary students, the number of middle school students and the number of high school students that they project this will uh, produce. They will furnish that information to the school board. And, and uh, Mr. McGowan is also, even, he kind of left this out, he just gave a, a big school site to the Metropolitan Government over in a development of his called Burkett Ridge. 15 acres. Just gave 15 acre site for, to the school. For a new elementary school. 
And so again, the, when they look at this, they'll look at the impact on the deal. And if we, they look like they, we're doing impact somehow or another, they wanted to do something, they'll, they'll ask us. And so if you went to uh, Nolansville Road and looked at the Shane uh, uh, Elementary School and the Oliver Middle School, they needed to find a site for schools. And when we did Lennox Village, by the way, which was around 1600 housing units, we asked them what would they need it, what was parameters. We helped them find that site. We actually got it under contract and, and they said they would buy it directly. We didn't have to give it to them. And so we actually assigned that contract to Metro Public School so they could buy that site for that school. The one down in Burkett Ridge, uh, we actually gave them the 15 acres. And uh, basically we, we negotiated that when we got there. And that's an 800 home community that we're building. And again, it, that home has the same identical product, very, very similar to it going into it. You could go out there today and see it. Uh, Billy, that, yeah, that, that Billy sounds the, the, very good. The uh, school. Sorry, sorry, but I'm getting the impression that the planning uh, department procedure does not give an opinion of whether or not this School they actually, they, will be exceeded by this development. They actually do put the school board on notice and the school superintendent on notice that this is happening and they asked him to comment. And so there is actually a, in the box of things that they go through for the planning commission. It is put on notice with the school board and and then they have the right to say how it affects the school one way or the other. Thank Billy, you. Billy, Billy yes. this is Larry that the planning department does use the school MNPS and they do an analysis of the impact on schools. That analysis we learned is based on local birth rates and a lot of our population increase is coming from people moving into the area, not necessarily on the birth rates. And they do not go back and validate their formulas at in MNPS. So I maintain that it's a flawed process. So we don't have a consensus on whether or not we can rely on the planning department's opinion on school capacity in order to evaluate. Correct. Either. Correct. In my opinion, I don't think we can rely on the planning department's analysis for anything, uh, whether it be, you know, the the increase in traffic, whether it be stormwater, whatever. Um, they have outdated formulas that they do not go back and validate. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you on that. The only thing I've seen on the planning department is a couple of virtual meetings that they had where some particular thing was questioned and they had very good responses. I don't know them off the top of my head. Now, that's just limited experience with them. But I do think uh, Council Lady Lee having a school board or, yeah, school board member at these meetings or available at these meetings is a good idea. That's all I got. Back, um, David, I don't know exactly who was talking, but go back when you talked about the piece about the middle school, because that is what I had been needing to hear the whole time, because I don't know where they had planned to put our middle school in this area. Um, you just you you said something or mentioned something about that when you were uh, talking a few minutes ago. Do you know what down I'm talking at, about? Down at Burkett Ridge. Uh, we offered this, uh, the city a site for 15 acres to put a new elementary school. We said it can be any school you want to put in there. And they said all they needed was, was an elementary at this time. And, and so we deeded that to them last year, no cost to the city whatsoever. And, and that, is, that school is being planned now that we had another site that's a, close to 15 acres, might be two and a half to 15 acres for a middle school. And mm -hmm. At Crothers Farms, we call it Crothers Farms, and that site right now, the city has indicated they might not want that site, 
they have let the charter school people know that and the charter school people are believe it or not are surveying that site right now to determine would they like to go ahead and put a charter middle and high school on that particular site uh, and but they have to get permission from the city of nashville to be able to receive that and again that would be a site that we would comment oh, okay thank you Well, it is 6.59 now, and so I'm asking if there were some comments in the chat that didn't get brought out, or maybe in the conversation you have heard, um, someone else has some other um, input or anything that they want to say on this. Now would be the time to go ahead and do that, please. I'm fine. I, I put some stuff in the chat, but it's, it's irrelevant, basically. Uh... Or, I mean, I, don't, I think that, you know, the gentleman on the line, they have their uh, focus. And I guess that would definitely take, I guess, took precedence. And so I'm fine. Um, I, I just, I was wondering about the schools, though, and the, um, the infrastructure as far as police and fire and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it seems like this area is being built up pretty fast. So I'm just kind of concerned. And then uh, once again, I, I have, I'm not hearing anything about retail to kind of help tamper, temper the situation uh, with all this building of homes. I, like, like it's already been mentioned and like I already indicated, we're getting a lot of people moving in from out of state. And I, I, I think this is what's driving these home built bills, but I'm just concerned about, you know, what the future is going to look like. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to hit, and you reminded me of something. So, but I will say this, did you see um, where they're going to have the ground, the ground breaking for the Tangier um, outlet stores? So they're going to start on those. Um, I have, um, they sent me an email about it. And so I just, took a screenshot and I put that on my Facebook page because I can't remember exactly what date that ground ground breaking is. But if you want to go to that, I think that would be a good thing. So look on my Facebook page so you can see uh, what the date of that is. Okay. And yes, the other yes, thing that I was going to ask real quick, what about this um, property over here across from me that used to be a music uh, venue? Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Starwood. Starwood. Well, I mean, I, I'll we leave had, it alone. Uh, but. We had a wonderful, uh, well, I thought it was kind of wonderful plan for that. And then on the back part of it, he wanted to put a um, a, a warehouse place. They call it a, a, a distribution center, but it had to, the back part of it had to be zoned for warehouse. <laughs> they were going to have a large green space in the middle of it. Um, for if there was going to be like um, a farmer's market or you want to have some uh, folks come in and uh, I don't know, music or whatever there was, he had done a large uh, green space. And then where the townhomes were was also a lot of green space so the families could come out and play, uh, throw balls and stuff like that. But because on the back part of it, he wanted that distribution center to help with the money and, and doing the rest of it. And it was going to have retail on the front. Um, you had a lot of people who were not in favor of that. Um, there were even some people across the street that aren't even in 33, but uh, that were in District 32 that did not want that. So they built so much up on it till it went through and it was voted down. So right now it's a barren like it was before and there's nothing there that's getting ready to come there. And you were correct on that originally. Yep. Yep, but who am I? Okay, so the second thing that, the other two things that I wanna ask that um, Ms. Gilda, you reminded me to ask them uh lights you didn't talk about lights but i i hate to make an assumption but uh you're going to have lighting all through there yes we have street lights all throughout the community 
and uh, okay. it will be straight lights throughout the community. Are there any dead ends? There are not really any dead ends. Or are there going to be any dead ends waiting for connection? There are no dead ends. Okay. The second piece, and I talk about this, and I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I was uh, having a conversation with a policeman, and he was speaking about this. There is something that when you put in the houses and part of the infrastructure, you can put the wiring, because I know you said you're going to uh, put irrigation things down, and I think that is wonderful. That is the extra piece. But uh, when you put down your wiring, I guess like you would wire a house or whatever, there's wiring that you can just add under the ground so that later if the HOA or somebody wants to add cameras, that infrastructure for the cameras will already be there. Do you know what I'm talking about? All of our houses are pre-wired for security systems and, and we do offer the ring doorbell as an option. Uh, so if they would like to have a ring doorbell, they can buy that ring doorbell and have it mounted to their system. So uh, all the houses are pre-wired with windows, security systems and things of that nature. So the security typically is uh, monitored by somebody else. They do not have to have it monitored. Uh, however, uh, there is the, the company that pre-wires and phones will give them a special deal on monitoring those for security. Okay. That's that's a great because that's almost like an an uh, what do you call it an update or whatever. So that's a piece that you should have brought out yourself earlier because that's a good part. But what I'm talking about isn't for the individual houses. It's like under when you put stuff down so that if people want to put like a camera at the entrance of the um, complex, then uh, the wiring will already be there and they don't have to do as much wiring. So the doorbell that the, the ring doorbell hooks to that door monitors 24 seven and it basically erases after a certain period of time. If anybody's ever had a ring doorbell. And so basically, if you had an event happen in front of your house, you can go back and pull that video up and see what happened. And so it's a, it's a new system been out now for about 3 years. It's very popular. I'd say that probably 50% of the people that buy a house from us have a ring doorbell installed. Uh, and at the same time, we could probably probably put a security camera overlooking that little amenity area, uh, but it would be owned by the association and they would have to have somebody Correct. for that. Correct. So now you're going, maybe I wasn't explaining it correctly before, and I know what a ring doorbell is because I have one. So the, the piece that I was talking about wasn't for that. It was if they wanted to put like a camera to see who's coming in, going out, that type of thing. But it sounds like you... Uh, you were getting to that when you said over the amenities part, you could put a, a camera. So that's more, I guess, what I was talking about. Anybody else? Larry, I know you got some comments to take us out. Actually, no. I'm I'm good. Okay. We well, thank you all for your time. Appreciate that nice you. input. Thank you very much. Um, would you do me a favor before we leave? Could you put, because all of this was emailed to everybody, correct? What we were looking at today, you sent that to Rosie, correct? That's correct. Okay, so that was sent out. Would you mind putting an email address to whomever over in the chat, just in case people want to reach out to you? that uh, weren't on here or um, that are on here and just didn't want to, to say it out? If, if somebody else could do that, we'd appreciate it. That's what locked our system up is when we opened up the chat, it locked our system up and okay. we, can't, we can't access it. And we've not been ignoring anybody's questions in the chat. We just were able to pull up the second question and our system locked up. So if you will let her know, what email you want sent out. I will ask Miss Rosie uh, if she will just again send this information out and, and she can just say, uh, just for your information to make sure you got it. And here is the email address if you have specific questions. And then we'll send that to everybody that's on my database. We'll, we'll get you an email tomorrow. 
Is that right with you? Well, she's asking Rosie, and we'll help Rosie any way we can. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not bad. We started like eight minutes late, so we're ending at seven after eight. It's still daylight outside, and it's nice. So I really appreciate everybody that gave up time to be on this. Um, and don't forget, please, it's very important. If you have not early voted, don't forget to vote next week. And if you are going to your polls, make sure that you look at your card because the Elections Commission sent out, um, it was in a little regular little white uh, fold up piece. So I hope you didn't throw it away. Well, your voting card is in that because a lot of us have a different precinct to go vote to uh, vote at since you know they change the lines and different stuff like that so it is important you've got a lot of folks on there and this is the primary and then you'll have another one but um go ahead and make sure you go and vote yay and i hope everybody has a wonderful evening and thank you so very much everybody for being on Good night. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate it.